back to Chapter 2, Consolidation of Financial Information on Fundamentals of Advanced Accounting. So we're looking at Learning Objective 2-6A. Uh, Actually, I think this presentation covers all of the Learning Objectives uh, 2-6 from A through C, I believe. Uh, so we're going to, uh, first of all, prepare the journal entry to consolidate the accounts of a subsidiary if dissolution takes place. If you look at the previous presentation, we were talking about uh, the two uh, business, the two types of business combination, one being the dissolution of either the purchasing company or the company that's being purchased, and then having one surviving company so this is what we're focusing on here. So just to re reiterate it once again that we're using the acquisition method uh, to, the, to account for this uh, merger. And so the acquisition method focuses on the fair value of assets and liabilities of the company that's being purchased on the date of acquisition. And then we also have to make a determination of the consideration transferred from the, the buyer of this company. So uh, the consideration transfer, as we looked at in the previous example, could be a combination of cash, could be also they have issued additional shares of stock. It could be also debt. Okay. Uh, so in previous presentation, we sort of named the different um ways of purchasing or, or the consideration transfer in order to purchase uh, the company. And in later chapters, we're going to be looking also at the fair value of non-controlling interest. And then we are to identify assets and liabilities that are over or undervalued, and this will result, will result in a good goodwill or a gain from a bargain purchase. So we came up with a little formula. I just wanted to kind of uh, reiterate this as we go over through the uh, presentations. So we had the example where uh, we have Big Net who purchased a small port and we have calculated the acquisition price uh, was uh, composed of cash of 550,000. Uh, 20,000 shares of stock, and we're looking at the fair market value of those shares on the date of acquisition. So we said that in this case, the fair value, the amount that we paid, assuming we're big net, to acquire small port, uh, it tied exactly to the fair value of small, port, small port's net assets on the date of acquisition. Therefore, there was not a uh, goodwill. And so in this case, we're looking at, let me go back to that slide. We're looking at small ports, um, fair value, okay, the fair value of the assets. And so since small port is dissolving, okay, the surviving company will be big net company, all right? And so the fair value of this asset or small ports, net assets and liabilities will have to be transferred to big net financial statements. And so we do that through uh, this journal entry, okay? And again, this journal entry is done by big net. Uh, because the small port dissolved, right? And so the surviving company is big net. And so the small ports um, assets and small ports liability is reflected uh, their fair market value on the date of acquisition, which was December 31st. And then these entry, these accounts here that we're crediting relates to the acquisition uh, price or the consideration transfer. Okay, it's kind of hard to write with this pen, but I think you get the zest of it, don't you? Very well. 
All right, and so we have our 550,000 of cash. We have issued 20,000 shares of stock. So remember that we're always going to credit common stock at par value. Okay, so that's the par value there. And then additional paid in capital will be the difference between our fair market value per share less the par value per share and then multiply by 20,000 shares that were issued. And that's how we arrived at the 1.8 million. So this entry again is made in BitNet's financial records. Okay, in this example, uh, pretty much the same uh, big net is purchasing a small port. But in this case, we have that we have paid $1 million in cash instead of 550. Uh, we did issue uh, 20,000 shares at $100 per share uh, fair market value. It's still the $10 par value. And so the total consideration transfer in this case is three million okay so if we take this three million and we compare that to the fair market value of small port on the date of acquisition uh, we see that we have paid more than small ports fair market value uh, the, the fair market value of their net assets uh, maybe we see uh, future potential for this company uh, and therefore for whatever activity they are performing. And so for that, we are willing to pay more to acquire this company. So we end up with an undefined or undetermined difference, which we're going to call this goodwill. So uh, if we were to break this down, Okay, so the arrows are pointing to assets uh, with values that differ from their book values. So, for example, computers and equipment, uh, we have an increase. Uh, so it looks like it, the book value is undervalued by 200,000. Uh, capitalized software looks like in on their balance sheet, uh, their value was undervalued by 1,100,000 and then we have these customer contracts that were, we didn't have any value on the balance sheet for those and we're assigning 700,000 to the customer contracts and then we also have an appreciation in liabilities of 50,000 so these differences we have the differences here on the computers and equipment the capitalized software uh, the customer contracts and the no payable. So we come up with a net uh, appreciation of 1,950,000. So part of this um, difference uh, between the acquisition price and the net book value is due to these assets that we have identified. And so we end up with the same amount of goodwill or unidentified difference, which is 450,000. So remember that we're talking about the solution in this example. So that means that small port uh, is going to dissolve on December 31st. So all these assets and liability will have to be transferred to big net company. Um, their fair values on the date of acquisition. So once again, uh, big uh, small port uh, dissolves. We have a surviving entity is big net. So big net is posting this journal entry uh, to reflect this purchase on their financial statements. Once again, we have a small port. Um, assets and liability, the fair market value is shown here on this journal entry. And we have our goodwill, okay, because we our acquisition price exceeded the fair market value of small ports net assets. Uh, we pay cash of 1 million. So these uh, accounts here, 
reflect our acquisition price of three million, right? The one million that we paid, the twenty thousand shares reported at par value, and then oops, sorry, I thought I had the breakdown of the additional paid in capital. If you recall, that was the one hundred minus the ten dollars times twenty thousand shares. Okay, uh, the other situation will be where our fair market value is or exceeds the acquisition price or the acquisition price, the amount that we're paying to acquire this company is less than its fair market value. Now, why would a company want to sell for less than fair market value? Uh, could be many reasons. Uh, perhaps they're, you know, financially uh, unable to sustain this company, or it may be due to, um, I don't know, maybe there's a death of uh, the owner or owners, and therefore a retirement, and they just want to kind of unload this company, and they're willing to sell it for less than fair market value. And so if that's the case, uh, then we uh, will have to recognize the gain. So big net will be the one recognizing the gain in this um, example. So once again, we're looking at the assets that have up and liabilities that have appreciated in value. Uh, we have the acquisition price is $2 million. Our net book value remains the same at 600,000. We have an excess. We allocate that excess to the differences in the undervalued um, assets and liability that we identified. And we have this um, uh, unidentified difference, which in this, in this case, we have called a gain. And once again, because our acquisition price was less than the fair market value of small ports net assets. So once again, we're still talking about the solution. So a small port dissolves, the fair market value of assets and liabilities will be transferred to big net on the date of acquisition. Okay, so here we go once again. Uh, did I point to the market? Yeah, there we go. And so uh, we have our small ports, current assets, and liability at fair market value. And then we have the accounts that are associated with our purchase price, which should tie to the two million. I'm sorry, I think I, I uh, went too far to the gain. So don't follow that. We're talking only about these two accounts in this case. Uh, so we're looking at the costs. There might be costs that are related to these uh, transactions, these acquisitions. Uh, we might involve attorneys and accountants, uh, bankers. Uh, we may have you know, internal costs, uh, professional secretarial, professional uh, salaries that we may have to uh, expenses that are related to the acquisition. We may have to, if we issue stock, we may have to register the stock and other uh, costs associated with the issuance of the stock, and that will come out of additional paid in capital. So here we have an example. So if we have uh, you know, um, expenses like attorneys and accountants, then we have a professional expense and we credit cash the same if we have secretarial services internal um, employees who have assisted us with so they have some time allocated with uh, to this purchase uh, we take it out of salaries uh, we credit cash or accounts payable and then if we have costs associated with the issuance registration and issuance of stock then we're going to debit additional paid in capital. I think this is the most important one where students get most confused. Uh, so if we have uh, costs that are associated with the registration and issuance of stock, we're going to debit additional paid in capital.
Okay, so we are to prepare the journal entry to record a business combination when the acquired firm retains a separate existence. So remember that we had two situations, one where the uh, company does, uh, either company, the one, the buyer or the seller, whichever company is going to dissolve and we only have one surviving company. Uh, that's the situation that we looked at previously in this presentation. Uh, the second situation is where both companies continue to exist and therefore we have to consolidate the financial statements. Okay, so we are consolidating the financial statements. This solution does not occur. We still have two separate entities and therefore these uh, financial statements are only prepared with the purpose of distributing to third party users. Okay, so here we have an example. So this is not a dissolution, okay? We have BigNet that acquires a small port, same situation on December 31st. Uh, they're issuing 26,000 shares, $10 par value, $100 fair market value per share. They have pay fees of 40,000 to a third party. And uh, there's also uh, a contingency. Okay, the contingency states that uh, BigNet promises to pay 83,200 to the former owners of small ports if uh, the company's earnings exceeds uh, 300,000 for the next annual period. Okay, so this is uh, a contingency on future cash flows or future earnings of the company. And only if this materializes, then they will, BigNet will pay this amount to small port. So the present value of the contingent liability is also included as part of our uh, consideration transferred, okay, or the acquisition price that's being paid for this company. So in this case, we have 2,600,000, that was the shares, 26,000 shares times 100. And the fair mark, uh, the present value of the contingency. Okay, so BigNet is the company that is purchasing a small port. So in BigNet's financial records, we will have to uh, record the investment in accordance with the equity method. Uh, so we are going to debit investment in small port company for two million six hundred and twenty thousand. We're going to credit our contingency for twenty thousand, the par value of the common stock issued, and then the difference between uh, the fair market value, the par value of the stock times the twenty six thousand shares. That will be our additional paid in capital, and then we have professional services that were related to the acquisition. So this is the entry that BigNet will have to make on uh, their financial statements. There is no entry to transfer small ports, assets and liabilities to BigNet's financial records because the small ports continues to exist as a separate entity. So we don't have that journal entry in this uh, example. And this concludes our presentation.